All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are watching. I am so excited to be here again today for Motherhood Today and Healthy Living, Healthy Lifestyle, all things health and motherhood. We are going to be talking about that today. I have a very, very special guest. She is someone who we go way, 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 way back, and I'm so excited to have her um, to come on. And I'm going to bring her on in just a second. Yay! <laughs> so we have a special guest here. Her name is Dr. Siri Press. And she gives me headaches. She told me not to call her doctor, but I'm like, I, it just has a nice ring to it. I like the way Dr. Siri sounds. So uh, I'm so excited to have her on the Motherhood Today show. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to get into this session. She will introduce herself and she'll let you know what she's all about in just a second. But before we do that, we're just gonna start with a prayer um, just to open up the session. So, dear Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity once again to come before your people, to come before you, Lord, and to present all that we know, the wisdom that we know, the wisdom that we have access to, and the wisdom that you have given to us. So we ask, Father, that you would take control of this entire session. We pray that you will let your name be glorified even through this. We pray that the, the wisdom that will come forth will um, be will be liberating to women all over the world. And so we thank you, Father, once again, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen, 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 amen. All right, Dr. Siri, yes. come on, <laughs> tell us who you are. Please introduce yourself. Okay, so my name is Siri Press. I am an internal medicine physician. I am practicing in Atlanta, Georgia. I am a mother, a wife, and yeah, that's pretty much the sum of it. <laughs> Wow. So can you um, tell us a little bit, how did you end up choosing um, medicine as a field and especially, you know, being a doctor? How do you, how do you get into that? Oh, that's a great question. You didn't that <laughs> I didn't put that in there. Sorry, it just came up. So honestly, the seed was planted when I was very, very young. I had a pediatrician. Um, his name was Dr. Ursula. He was this old Asian man. And I remember one day visiting his office for one of my well child checks, and he just randomly said, oh, this little girl could be a doctor. And I was like, mm -hmm. like, okay, let me, <laughs> let me think about that. Like, and so like, once that seed was planted, my mom kind of like started getting me science books, you know, human body mm -hmm. type books, and, um, you know, just introducing me to that. And so it kind of just took off, and, and here I am. <laughs> Here you are. That's awesome. That's right. So that and that's an important point. That little seed, you know, that was planted at that time. Your mom did not just leave it there. She watered it. She watered it, and now you know. Here we are, several years later. So that's awesome. That's that's a point for some mom out there. You right. know, there's seeds that are are being planted in your children, and you know, when you see their positive seeds or good seeds, you know, water them, and yeah. and so that's awesome. So you are a mother. Yes. Um, when did you become a mother? So I'm of the school of thought that, you know, women become mothers as soon as they know they're pregnant um, because that's when all the sacrifice starts. So I found out I was pregnant in November of 2018. Mm. And I had my daughter July 24th, 2019. So, so that's when I, um, you know, became... <laughs> a mother and started all this, you know, sacrificing and, and just putting my child first, you know? Yep. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. So how many children do you have? Just one. Have just, one. just one. Just one. So she is almost two, right? Yeah. She'll be She's two Yes, I follow you on Instagram, and so I see every once in a while you will post pictures of her. Usually, it's her backside, but every while I think you probably posted maybe one, one, uh, one visual, one facial. <laughs> so um, it's always exciting <laughs> to see. Now, okay, let me just give you some background with me and Siri. 
we sorry, Dr. Sear, we go way back. We actually went to college together and we've always had this like inside joke, just the, the our, our sense of humor. She's always she or maybe she's just always laughing at me. I don't know. But um we've always had this connection. What's that? What you say? You're hilarious. Like you're just <laughs> So she she's always laughing at me. So I I don't know if I should take that as a good thing or a bad thing. But hey, no, <laughs> it's a great thing. No, we we've had this connection for a while. So I'm so glad um, that we are able to connect in this way as well. So okay, next question is: What does being healthy mean to you? Health to me. I- that definition has changed and evolved. Um, you know, and as a doctor, I have a certain definition of health, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. being free of disease, right? Physical disease. But as a mom, as a human, as a woman, it's 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 more than that, right? Like, it's mm-hmm. the mental, it's the spiritual, it's the physical. Like, it's more than just being free from any formal diagnosis, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's, you know, just being good to your entire self and making sure that, you know, every single part of you is, is good, you know? Mm, mm, mm. I love that definition because I think, I think we don't consider all of those things. You know, when we think of health, we think, we just think like, am I sick enough to go to the hospital kind of thing? Or, you know, is a hospital or not? Or can I just take some meds or not? So we don't necessarily consider the full picture of health and it's it it is um, inclusive of everything. Everything that we encounter, everything that we experience, um, is has an impact on our health. And so, I love your definition of being healthy. Now, you're a mom and a doctor. How do you teach your teach a healthy lifestyle to your child, your daughter? So, I think children children are sponges, right? Like. They want to do everything that you do. So from the beginning, you have to model it for them, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like they need to see you treating yourself well, see you mm-hmm. eating the right things, see you mm-hmm. prioritizing exercise. Um, and then from a from a basic level, I mean, you're providing nutrition to your child. You're mm-hmm. you know, kind of structuring their day yourself. So it's like making sure that you're putting healthy things on their plate and making sure that, you know, they know what's good and healthy to eat so that they only really crave those things. Like my child has never had candy. She's never had juice. Like the only sugar she's ever had is from fruit. Like, so, um, and then also complex carbs. I didn't start giving her like pasta and rice and stuff until she was probably like, I don't know, 10 months. And then even at that point, it, it's rare that she has, you know, like spaghetti or rice or something like that. Um, it's just a lot of protein and vegetables and food. Wow. Wow. And actually, you said something that I never maybe thought about it like that. But you said um, you are the one that's providing um, nutrition to the children. And I just thought about breastfeeding. And because um, my daughter, she's still breastfeeding now. And um yeah like what i eat i mean te- in terms of teaching health right it starts like you said with modeling and so i'm thinking about okay i'm teaching her health even by what i'm put you know what i'm eating what's going to her through the breast milk and i never really thought about it like that um but that is that's so important and so critical and i think that um yeah, like we we have to be so conscious about that. What we're feeding them through breast milk, and then when they graduate to what we're putting on their plates and and every other thing. So that's that's so important. Yeah, thank you for that. And go you for still breastfeeding. How old is your baby? Girl, <laughs> <laughs> she is. Uh, she's one and a half. So she's yeah going on to and um she she's not she won't let it go she won't let it. <laughs> literally <laughs> so um yeah we're we're still at it we're still at it and it's I mean I love it it's it's a form of bonding that we have and um <laughs> it is funny the way she looks at me like when we're not connected she's just like where are you going where are you going and, <laughs> I think that's a a direct result of the uh, amount of time we've been breastfeeding. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so we're 
we'll 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 see how long it lasts. But yeah, we we're still doing that. Um, okay, so what effect does ill health have on motherhood? Oh gosh, so many things, right? Um, let me let me start by talking about it from my perspective, right? As a hospitalist, um, when I see patients who are sick and a few minutes in the hospital, right? Like let's say they are a mom, like they're separated from their children for as long as they're in the hospital, right? Like that's not natural. That's not the way it was intended to be. So. Um, you know, the separation aspect, illness can lead you to that. Um, and then from a, a, a mental health perspective, mm-hmm. it's like when you have, you know, physical illness that's plaguing you, it can also affect your mind, right? And mm-hmm. your patience level and your, you know, just emotional reserve. And children need you, you know, to be patient, to be kind, to be, you know, filled up so that you can pour into them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think I said this the last time we talked, like children, Children don't understand all the time, like what's going on around them. And, you know, if mom isn't in a space where she can, you know, be patient and kind, like they'll internalize that and think that it's their problem. Mm. Like they internalize mm. your problems as theirs. And it's like they're really not the issue, right? Um, yeah. This can, of course, lead to long term mental health effects on your kids. So, um, so yeah, so it's just always best to, you know, take care of yourself and, you know, and that's not to say that, you know, women with chronic issues can't be good mothers. It's like, mm-hmm. make sure that you're taking your medications or eating well or just doing what you need to do to be stable and controlled and whatever illness you might have. And, um, and yeah, just, just, just take care of yourself so that you can take care of your kids. <laughs> Yeah, and um, the point that you you brought up, it really, it, it truly hit me uh, last time we talked. It hit me so, so hard that children can internalize what they see happening around them, which has nothing to do with them at all. Like, it can be something that's stressing you out at work, and you project that onto their children and, and onto your children, and suddenly they're blaming themselves. Like, themselves. That is... You know, it's it's crazy, <laughs> but it's it's um it's something that we need to be very conscious of and very intentional about to you know not project whatever we're going through onto them because you know they're these precious little gifts that God has given to us and whatever's happening out outside, whatever's happening at work, it, it's not a it has nothing to do with them, and that I, I just think that that is so 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 critical um for us like it's something that on a daily we need to yeah. really be intentional about yeah definitely <laughs> that's really one of the reasons for me because um, i feel like when babies are smaller it's like they're not really moving much they're not getting into things it's easier mm-hmm. like, on certain level of patients mm-hmm. it's a little bit harder um and so for me, that was one of the things that led to me just quitting my full time job. It was mm. like, if I have to pick between my job and my kids, I'm picking my kids. And I'm mm. just grateful that in a profession and in a space where I have the I have the luxury of doing that, right? Um, mm. Not every mom has that luxury. Um, and so it's just it's just hard. But but as much as you can tailor your life to minimize stresses and like help you to be the best type of mom you can be, like. It's just it's priceless. Mm, mm. So can you tell can you tell us a little bit about what like what were you experiencing? What were you going through that led you to say, you know what, this full time job is not working with where I am, you know, right now with my daughter. Talk us through that. So okay, oh my god, you want me to that time? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I took a 14 week long maternity leave and I was still pumping and and well I wasn't really nursing as much because she she didn't really enjoy nursing um, mm. like other babies do. she would do it sometimes and then so I was essentially an exclusive pumper. Mm. Um, and so I got to a point where I was over producing milk and I would get mastitis every time I tried to wean and it was just a lot. And I was battling mastitis right when I went back to work. Mm. It was crazy. And I walked into a census of 20, 
five pages mm. by myself. Mm. And I was just like, <laughs> man, so I got to round on these patients, make sure they're good, and I have to pump, make sure my child has food, and I need to go pick her up from daycare. And mind you, before I dropped mm. her off at daycare, I had woken up at one in the morning and at four in the morning to pump. Stay up after that to get everything ready, get her ready. So that's like my day, right? Mm-hmm. The hospitalist, I was working seven on, seven off. Like that's your your typical schedule. And um, so it just got to be a lot, if you can imagine. Mm-hmm. I, I did that and I was so burnt out. It's like I was counting down the days to my seven days off. Mm. Um, but it's not really seven off if you're having parents for those seven days, right? So um, it was just a lot. Like, I felt like I was just going, going, going without much of a break. And I mm-hmm. felt like my patience was wearing thin with my kid. Like, I felt, I don't know, like I just felt like I didn't have enough energy to be the type of mom I wanted to be. And it's like, I, I realized, like, little things that she was doing. It's like, she's a kid, right? Mm-hmm. Um, little things that she was doing would just make me feel annoyed. And I'm like, wow, I feel like this about my kid. Like, what? what's going on, you know, and then I just realized, like, this is too much, like, this is just too much for anybody, mm-hmm. and it's just like I could just give my kid back to God, like, hey, <laughs> this is not working, um, so the thing that I could change was my job, right, so she was six months old, and it was January, she was six months old, and I was like, okay, I'm going to submit this letter of resignation, and, um, I drafted it and never submitted it because I'm like, man, doctors don't quit. Like, mm. like, what am I doing? And so it took me from January until April to be like, you know what? This job doesn't care about me. <laughs> so it's like, this job isn't going to, you know, like, this job isn't, like, I'm a cog in a wheel in this mm. line, right? Like, like, they don't care about me. I can't, I can't stay here. Mm. So I, I quit. I quit without another contract in my hand. I quit not knowing where my next check was going to come from. I quit. Now, that probably wasn't the most responsible thing to do, but, you know, I'm a saver. I'm very frugal. So so it, it was okay. I'm like, I'll at least be okay. Mm. So, um, so, yeah, so April, April 8th, I submitted my letter of resignation, and it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulder. It was mm. like, you know, I'm, I'm free. Like, I'm reclaiming my time. I'm reclaiming my energy. Like, mm-hmm. you know, to a point because you know, my daughter gives me most of my time and energy now. Um, <laughs> and so that just, it was the greatest thing. And when I, when I, because with doctors, you have to put in a three-month notice. So from April oh. to June, July, I was working. Um, and then I was off. Like, I took, I took a second maternity leave almost. Like, I, I just took three months and I was like, I'm not about to worry about Finding another gig, picking up another shift, like it'll happen when it happens. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, when you're obedient, right, God will drop opportunities <laughs> in your lap, and it's That's not right. going to do what you um, imagine. Um, so originally, I said if I go back to work, I'm going to just work night, so that way I'll have my days free and it'll just be easier. So I thought, but but God had other plans, and He <laughs> these locum opportunities in my lab. So locum is when you basically just work at a hospital as needed, like like when they need help. And so I have one, two, three, I have four different locum contracts, right? So at any given time, I could go to whatever hospital here or there and just pick up chips and make money. And I make my own schedule. So mm-hmm. like I'm off for holidays, I'm off for a birthday, I'm off for my child's birthday without having to worry about swapping with anybody. So. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that happened. I'm glad that I listened to those nagging emotions that were telling me like, hey, this isn't right. Like this isn't mm-hmm. how you're supposed to be feeling. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's how that came about. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's powerful. And I think a lot, and I'm sorry, we're going off script, <laughs> but we're good. We're good. Um, I think a lot of mothers and women um, come to this point. So, like, what advice would you have for somebody who is in this position? I mean, who's at like the point where you were, and they're like, "This doesn't feel right." I don't know if I, you know, wh- what advice would you give to them? Man, 
Oh my gosh. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Because the thing that like helped me to process those emotions and get to that point was journaling mm. and realizing like journaling and praying like like God this is not this is not my portion like this is not how motherhood is supposed to feel like this is supposed to be different like so what do I need to do to make it different right mm. and I feel like once you acknowledge that you're feeling that way acknowledge that it's okay to not be superwoman. Like, I'm a woman. I'm not superwoman, right? Like, acknowledge that and be okay with it. And then figure out how to just, I don't know, take things off your plate as reasonably as possible. And and just don't be afraid to do it. Like, don't be afraid to make the decision to do it. Now, I know that's hard because I definitely held on with that letter for four months. Before <laughs> I it. But, um, but yeah, like it just just make the decision, and if it if it feels right when you do it, you know that you're being obedient. Like you know that you're doing what you're supposed to do. You know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so you so you don't have any regrets of having done that. <laughs> <laughs> I regret not doing it sooner. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah. So that that's an encouragement to. Um, Others who may be in that situation may be feeling like, you know what, uh, this, this doesn't seem right. Um, that's an encouragement. And I mean, you know, like you said, you were fortunate enough to be able to, to leave. There's, you know, there's women who can't for whatever, maybe um, for whatever reason, they, they aren't able to do that. Um, but I think in those situations, you know, still doing that evaluation of, okay, what can I change um, to make the load easier? And of course, uh, offering it to, to God and saying, look, Lord, you got to help. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So awesome. Awesome. Okay. So for a mother who is looking to change to a more healthy lifestyle, what steps should she take? Oh my God. I can't even remember how I answered this the last time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess prioritize priority, right? Um, start with food. Food is probably the the baddest habit we all have, like the mm. worst habit we all have. Because mm. in our society it's all not necessarily food that's good and good for you. Um, so I think starting there and and trying to figure out how to tailor what you're ingesting to be what you need to be ingesting. Um, and then moving, like definitely exercising as much as you can. And I know with babies, it's hard, right? Like it's, it's very hard with babies, but, um, what, for me, at least my baby was my face, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you can lift them up, you can go do the stairs with them. You can't go for walks carrying them, like, um, or even not carrying them if you don't want to do that. Um, but just moving and then the, the mental health piece is a big thing. Um, so I guess one of the things that, that I think helped me to, to at least try to stay mentally healthy while I was in the mom was journaling and, and praying, like lots of journaling, lots of prayer. Um, so it's like pick what's important to you, pick what's mm -hmm. important to you, if it's your, your weight, if it's your, your exercise regimen, if it's your, your mental health, like pick what's important to you and, and just make the decision to, to start, like just mm -hmm. pick something, start small. Um, and give yourself grace too. Like that's a that's a huge part of it. Cause a lot of people think like, you know, if I can't make a, a change that's that's happening all 30 days of the month, then it's not effective. But mm. it's like just start small, just one day a week, two days, a week, you know, and just build on it. Mm -hmm. Um and just start to develop those those habits to, to you know make yourself and your life healthier. Yeah. I think that that's the bird, at least for me. I constantly get caught up in like, okay, I have to do this. Yeah, like you said, a 30 day challenge, whatever. And then I, for some reason, miss a day and then I'm like, oh no. And then I just get all discouraged. And and <laughs> it's like, or I just put un, unreasonable and unrealistic expectations on myself and then beat myself up when I'm not able to meet them 
but they weren't realistic in the first place. And then, and it's like, once you, <laughs> you're like, oh, I guess it's not going to work. And then you just throw it all away. But no, it's like, okay, if, if all you can do is once a week, do once a week, because that's better than nothing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No 30-day challenges. 30-day challenges are set up um, for everyone <laughs> who tries them. Like, let's just, let's start small. One-day challenge, right? Yeah, One day exactly. Challenge. Like, like, I love like, it. Let's not do 30 day challenge. Let's bid those. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. One day challenge. Cause honestly, yeah. the hardest part is starting. So a lot of times you stuck on just this that. So that one day challenge is just like, oh, okay, you can you can actually start. So I love that. We're gonna hashtag that one day challenge. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. As an internal medicine doctor, what is the most popular question you get um, from moms related to health? So as an internal medicine doctor, so I deal with adults in general, males and females. Um, and moms typically don't like come to me for, mm. for that sort of thing. Um, but on a personal level, I think the most popular question I get from moms is how I lost the baby weight. Mm. Um, and my answer is always just don't gain it in the first place. Like, mm. You know, when you are pregnant, that's that's an opportunity for people to come and tell you, oh, just eat what you want, have all the ice cream, cake, donuts, blah, blah. And it's like, that's that's a setup. Like, you don't want to do that. If anything, okay. pregnancy should make you want to eat as healthy as possible, to make mm. the baby mm-hmm. as healthy as possible. Right. And the benefit of that is that you're not gaining all this baby weight. Um, mm. so, so, yeah, so that was my secret, I guess. I just mm. really came much weight. I didn't want to. Mm. I was very um, cognizant about cravings. And, you know, if I knew I, I, I shouldn't be hungry at whatever time, I would you know, just drink water instead, right? Um, mm-hmm. And your OB, when you first get pregnant and go to your, your visit, they should give you, like, a sheet that tells you, um, like, how many more calories you need each trimester. Because um, even though you're eating for two, you know, the other person is, like, this big. So, <laughs> it's like, they tell you, you know, how many more calories you need along the way. And so, it's just, that's helpful to not go too far off track, you know. Mm. That's good. That's good. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay. So, what advice do you have for soon to be moms and new moms on um, health pre and post childbirth? Um, Because the thing that's coming to mind right now is is mental health, right? Mm -hmm. Because being a new mom is hard. It is very hard. And you just, you don't know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say in preparation for that, just Make sure you have as much support as possible. Um, make sure that as much as you can, tailor your expectations to not, like just don't have any, don't have any expectations. You know? mm. <laughs> just kind of go with the flow because it's, it's a very, um, it's an adjustment. It's, it's mm. an adjustment. And, um, and I think that not expecting what you should be expecting or what, what actually is going to happen is a setup for just depression and sadness and, and all types of things. So, so I would say just have support and, and don't have any expectations. Um, and I don't know, meal prepping as um. best as you can or having someone else meal prep for you, that's helpful because I think when I was a new mom, I forgot to eat a lot too. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's real right there. Yeah, you forget. I mean, I probably brushed my teeth like two or three times a week. If that, like, to just forget to like, yeah. do those things just because of how it is showering, like, like all those things that are just so needed for your you know, hygiene, mental health, physical health. It's like you just you forget to do them. So it's like just having systems in place to make sure that those things get done. I'm like that. Mm-hmm. That would be helpful. So just and, and you need support. You just need support to be able to do all of these things. So that, that's the best advice I would have. Just have a, a, a network of mm-hmm. support system. So. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, um, <clears throat> oh, I just had a question. I it is it escapes me. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, this is this has been really, really good. I'm so glad that we're we're having this discussion. Um, your your daughter, she's gone on to. So how like what has the transition been like um, in the different ages, like from zero to three months, and now that she's walking and talking, I assume like what has that transition been like? Just getting adjusted to all those things. Um, you know. I had wrong expectations about that. So you know how people will say it gets easier, right? Mm -hmm. That's not true, right? Mm. The the challenges change. Like when she couldn't talk, couldn't walk, couldn't even roll, right? Mm -hmm. I was always worried, like, oh, is she gonna smother herself? Or oh, is she gonna you know what I mean? Like you're, mm -hmm. you're really worried and anxious about those things. Um, and then it's like as they grow. It's like awesome to see them grow and develop and get all these skills, but then the, the anxiety changes from, you know, you're worrying about them smothering themselves to, oh, are they going to fall off of the couch or are they going to mm -hmm. run down the stairs when they should? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like the, the anxiety is there the whole time, but it just changes, right? And then um, the other thing is that they're always fun. I always thought my daughter was. Fun, but it's like they get fun in a different way as they get older, mm -hmm. um, and and that may or may not be a good thing because you're always <laughs> running <laughs> after them, chasing after them, like you know what I mean. Uh -huh. um, so it's just been. I don't think it gets easier. I think the the challenges change and mm -hmm. the, just just things just change, but it doesn't necessarily get easier. Um, I don't think things will get easier until I don't know until your kid can. Use the bathroom by themselves, cook their own food, um, wash their own clothes. <laughs> 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 uh, but but as they're growing, like it's always fun to watch. And, and my thing, one of the things I was looking forward to was, was getting rid of that anxiety that mm -hmm. happened earlier on. But it's, it's just it's just changed form. You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> it's still there. Um, but, but yeah, so that, that's how that. Is. How has it been for you? Uh, let's see from, yeah, I think I, I think I can agree with you. Um, the, you, you always think like, oh, the next stage is going to be better, but then the next stage is like a whole new layer of stuff that you have to worry about. Yeah. Of challenges. Like my, my daughter, um, she, she started walking my, my, my younger daughter, when she started walk I mean, I couldn't wait for her to start walking. And then she started walking and now like she goes, to, you know, by, so every time I open the door, she will like sprint to the door and I'm like, oh, what if the door is, you know, not locked at some point? You know what I mean? Like, so there's, there's always the next challenge. I mean, the next season just brings um, new, new levels of <laughs> things you have to think about and things you have to worry about. But um, then at the same time, uh, I'm, I'm like, okay. I mean, again, you have to bring that to to the Lord. Like, okay, Lord, you have to watch over her, <laughs> you know, because now that she's walking and running and doing all these things, like now you, you, you really have to be the one that's going to watch over her. Like my, my older daughter, she, one day she walked into the kitchen and she grabbed a knife and I'm like, what, what? why do you want the knife you know <laughs> and i'm like i just politely you know took it from her and i'm like so i'm like okay lord you have to be the one that is going to to protect and watch over because i yeah <laughs> and so yeah i think it's it's you said what i completely understand yeah yeah, so it's yeah, it it's been um it's been interesting. It's been interesting. But I but I also love it too because again, you know, when you get to the new new stages and new levels and new milestones, like it's just one more thing that brings you a lot of joy, one more thing that that can be a lot of fun. And so I don't know, it's exciting to me. One other thing I just thought about as kids get older too, it kind of um you to check yourself a little bit because they're watching you 
Like mm -hmm. a zero to three month old isn't paying attention. So one of the other things that made me think about is, um, you know, as kids get older, right? You have to check yourself. You, like a zero to three month old isn't going to mimic you on the phone yelling at customer service, mm -hmm. but your twenty month old might. And, and so you shouldn't um, have these conversations. Because I remember one day my um, my child, I think she was probably like eighteen months when she did this. She had heard me on the phone, uh, upset with customer service, and she <laughs> went and picked up her little phone and just started. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hmm. like, yeah, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're gonna have to be better. Now, granted, customer service can be, you know, but um, oh but yeah, there, there's a difference. So, <laughs> so that's definitely yeah, different challenges, like you said. <laughs> yeah different challenges and um we okay two two things i'm thinking about and i hope i'm not going to forget uh the first one so you talked about journaling and that is something that i've i've heard you know a lot of people do i i don't do that um but i've always wanted to i don't know why i don't but like how how does how do you how does that work for you is it like a daily thing and and what do you what do you put in there you know what i mean yes. what, do I put in there? <laughs> what are you writing <laughs> Uh, well, so it's not a daily thing. Okay. Um, it's more of I mean, sometimes I'll do it every day, but it depends on how upset I am or how how I'm feeling, right? Like I mm -hmm. if I let something out every day, then I'll go to my journal and let it out. And it normally would happen um after I put the baby down to go to sleep and then I'm getting mm -hmm. ready to go to sleep. And it's like if my mind is racing or something's bothering me, then I'll just go to my journal and just write what I'm feeling and mm. try to reflect on why I'm feeling that way. Mm. Um, and then give it to God. <laughs> mm. like, or make it okay, please. <laughs> so, so that's kind of how it works. But yeah, definitely not an everyday thing. Um, but just the, you might have reached your boiling point and, and you need to just let them make it out. And, and, and it helps, right? It help, when, when you get it off your chest, it's it's a relief, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I because I, I want to get into that. Um, actually, did it recently. Actually, I have a video about it. Um, I did it recently, and it totally helped. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, let's, let's um make this a part of our uh, routine. I'm, it's definitely not going to be every day, but yeah. yeah. It's, it's something that I definitely want to do more of. So that's good. Um, okay. So now the second thing, I didn't forget. Um, we Last time we talked, you mentioned a book, a yes. resource. And I don't, I want to make sure we talk about this for anyone else who uh, might be interested in this as well. So can you just tell us a little bit more about the book? Yeah. So this happened um i found this book around november yeah november 2019 mm -hmm. um and it was around that time when um i was well after i had quit my job and everything and i had more time with my child it was i was still trying to you know learn and balance and, and do what i needed to do to be a good mom and um remember those nagging annoying feelings I told mm -hmm. you so those were kind of still creeping up and I, I, I didn't know what they were from, where they came from. Was this a learned emotion? Was it, you know, like where was it coming from? And so I prayed about it, journaled about it. And mm. literally it's like, God dropped this book in my mm. life um, because no one recommended it to me. It was literally me journaling about it. And then the next day trying to Google find resources to deal with, you know, your emotions as a mom. And um, that I, I was led to that book. And and oddly enough, um, during my reflections about how I am as a mother, I started to think about my own mother, right? Mm -hmm. like, um, she and I have different stresses as mm -hmm. mothers, like she was a single parent, you know, one in one household with three kids. Um, that's not my situation, right? But mm -hmm. I should feel the same burdens or stresses that she felt, right? Mm -hmm. And those shouldn't be projected onto my child. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we carry those things, right? Those are like learned behaviors, learned emotions. Um, 
said, so this book, you know, that's thrown to my lap, it's called The Emotionally Absent Mother, mm. um, Jasmine and Corey. And it just really tells you how important you are as a mother, like how your children literally feed off of you in terms of nutrition, emotions, everything. Like they learn who they are through you. Um, so if you're not emotionally in a space that can tell them you're good, you're you're great, I like being around you, I enjoy being around like you know what I'm saying? Like like mm-hmm. I I'm glad you're mine. I mm-hmm. your are important to me. Like those types of messaging. Like like you the book kind of tells you um, you know, what to do and what can happen if you don't do those things, uh, right? And so no mother ever, well, at least as far as I, I, I believe, I don't think mothers go into motherhood thinking, I'm going to mess my kid up. <laughs> like, that's not the goal, right? Yeah. You don't always know what impact you're having, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like when you do things. And so that book kind of puts that in perspective. And, and for me, it just gave me a whole new motivation, like, like, just a whole new motivation to make sure that, you know, I was speaking my daughter's love language, right? Because I, I love her, right? I just mm-hmm. know that. Like, it's not enough that I provide shelter or food or clothes. It's like, she needs to know, like, emotionally that I love her, you know? Because um, that, that's a huge problem, I feel like, right? Like, intellectually, a lot of us know our women love us, like, intellectually, mm-hmm. but emotionally, we feel it, do we mm. feel like, you know, they want it to be around us, or was it kind of like, go sit down with someone, or, mm. you know what I mean, like, like mm-hmm. we know that they love us, like, like in inside, mm-hmm. um, so that book kind of just puts all that in perspective, and just lets you know uh, what to do, and, you know, if you don't do those things, what could happen, or what your child could grow up to be, um, and yeah, I don't want any of that, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so it was definitely a blessing, like a huge blessing. Yes, yeah, and and Siri introduced me to this book, and she said she's like, "Look, this is a must read for every mom." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> let's let's yes. do this." So I'm uh, I actually I haven't started it yet, but it's in my it's in my queue, um, and it's 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 one of the books that I'll be reading um, very very soon. So I'm excited to get into it. I'm excited um, for that. And she was so gracious enough to gift me with the book. So I appreciate that. Um, shout out to you. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to get into that. And I think just generally, like we need resources because I mean, people have done this and people have done it well before. So um, we don't have to rely on our experience or what we've seen. Um, we can, we can, you know, lean on different resources that, you know, especially things that God will point you to, you know, when you're thinking about it and and considering, okay, this is what I'm struggling with. And the Lord will, you know, direct us to people, to books, to things, to videos, whatever, um, that will be a support to us. And so I'm, I'm excited um, to get into that book. And I'm, I'm glad that that's, you know, a resource that we have nowadays, because it wasn't as available back in the day. So... And yeah. so you'll notice too. I noticed the change, and like my daughter was a generally happy baby, mm. um, but I noticed a, a definite difference after I started implementing some of the things in that book. Um, and it was to the point where even her sitter noticed that she was like, "Oh, this, this baby is just so full of joy now." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, yes. oh, God. <laughs> like yeah. that's the goal. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Now you see, you have one child now. Do you think that, like, how do you think you will change and um, over time? Like, I, I don't know if you have any plans of having more children, but if you do, like, what do you think you will? I guess maybe what are some of the lessons learned? I know she's still young, but um, that you will do differently or the same. You know, I think. Um, one of the things I did that I think was a, I mean, it wasn't bad, it wasn't good. I, I pushed myself to breastfeed um, or, you know, provide breast milk to my child, um, even at the expense of my sanity. Mm. And that is a no, right? Like, yes, breast milk has all these benefits that are great and, you know, we all want our kids to have breast milk. Mm-hmm. 
But kids need a happy, healthy mom <laughs> more than they do breast milk. Like formula never killed anybody, right? So um, so yeah, so I think in, in hindsight, like if if I were to have any more children, um, I wouldn't push myself to do that. Like I would try it and then if it just doesn't fit with the situation we have going on, then it's okay to stop. I am giving myself permission to say, we're done. Um, so, so yeah, so that's definitely one thing. Um, and then I think the other thing is, especially after reading that book, um, I, I was very protective of my baby when she first came. So I, um, you know, wasn't as receptive to having people come around and help, you know, because I, I felt like, you know, you want to come help, but you really just want to tell me what to do. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, let me just you know but i think if i were to you know have a second baby it's like you know come on and help and then any i don't know negative messaging any bad vibes you might bring we can just say so <laughs> but, but like I'll, I'll take the help right like so i think that's that's something that that i would do differently because at the end of the day it's, it's yes you want to protect your children from bad people but i wouldn't say the people that were trying to come are necessarily bad people they just you know, just didn't do things the way I would have wanted them to do. And so, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I think just being more, what's the word, lenient or what's the word? What, just more accepting of the help, even, even despite all the differences. Yeah, I think um, me and you differ in that area. I was very accepting of all help. <laughs> Come on, just come on. No, no, no. I was, but I mean, I um, like my mom and, and my mother in law. They came and 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 they were huge, huge, major helps to me. And then um, other, just other close friends. But um, yeah, I'm I'm a huge, huge advocate of like having a major support network. I know that I wouldn't be able to do it without that because I'm like I remember. Before I had children, I remember the ideas and the thoughts that I had about how things should go based on some stuff that I had read. And I was just wrong. <laughs> like, you know, like when 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 it when um the baby came or the babies came, like some of those perspectives or some of those ideas were just not they weren't accurate. And so if I was doing it by myself, I would have continued with those. And um and I think I would have just yeah gone on a different path. So I'm I'm I was very glad that I had help and and so yeah I was very I'm very like I'm an advocate of like having a major support network not not huge but like a support network that really is is supporting you and all that. So since you bring up the I think I know what you're talking about when you say the ideas were dated right. That was my big thing about the help like like the whole idea of letting your baby cry or don't hold them all the time. It's like, for me, <clears throat> one, that's not natural, right? Like, yeah. I'm not hold my baby. My right. baby was me for nine months and she just came out. I'm going to hold her all the time. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I around that's telling me to put her down or telling me, you know, not to hold my baby or if I say, hey, can I go take a nap while you keep the baby? I don't want to be worried that you're going to just let her cry all day. Like, yeah, yeah. You know like so, those dated um, methods just kind of—I mm -hmm. don't know—it just didn't sit well with me. And it's very old school. And you mm -hmm. know, our parents are old. School. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things that I was just conflicted about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Conflicted. And and I think one of the things you discover over time is like. I mean, so some of those things, some of those things have an impact, but some of them don't. So like. We make a big deal about things that like they don't have a real impact, you know, in general. I'm trying to think of a, a good example. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but like I know I remember just like making a big deal about stuff that just wasn't a big deal. Like when we yeah, when when I did it a different way, it was fine, you know? And so, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that, I think we get caught up in that, especially not like millennial moms, you know, right now, like everybody's doing this and that, and there's 
there's all this information around what, how it should go, what you should do, this and that. Like, okay, let me give an example. Um, I okay, so what I think one of the things they say is, you know, exclusively breast milk for the first six months, nothing else, no water, no nothing. And so I was like, yeah, we're doing that. And then um, I I gave my daughter some water, and she like guzzled the water. I mean, she was like, she was like three months or two months or so. And she literally guzzled the water. Like, and I was like, but I thought you're not supposed to drink water. And and, and I was like, no, because actually my actually my mom and my mother in law were like, no, she can she can drink water. Like it's it's not a crime. It's not it's not gonna do anything negative to her. And I'm like, no, 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 no water, you know, exclusively breast milk for the first six months. And then I gave her water and she literally guzzled it. And the funny thing is she like she has not changed her. She does not joke around with her water (laughs) right now. And so that was a great foundation. Got a little stuck here. Guzzled the water. Listen, she drank that water so fast. And it was clearly so refreshing to her. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and she literally has been drinking water ever since. And like, even till now, she does not joke with her water. You know what I mean? And like, she likes to be hydrated. And I, I, need to, I wish I was like her because I, I struggle with drinking water. But um, she does not joke around with her water. But I just remember like, no, she can't drink water. No, 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 no. So being inflexible with things that are I mean it's like every you you have to go based on what your child needs and what like you don't have to necessarily follow whatever a, a thought and opinion of the day if that's not what your child needs so being more flexible that's yeah I guess is is what I'm trying to say and 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 paying attention to your child like my second daughter she she wasn't really into the water, so I, I actually tried to give her. I was like, "Okay, drink some water." You know, your sister drinks water, and she <laughs> she wasn't as excited about water. So <laughs> so you just have to, you know, know your own situation and know your child. So right. <laughs> so okay. So you said go ahead. I said for sure you have for to sure. your team. Yes. Yes. So we are um, coming up on on the end of our interview. I'm I'm so so overjoyed to have had you here to share your wisdom, to share your knowledge with us. It's been great. Um, how can people learn more about you? Are you on social media? Do you have a website? Yeah, yes to social media, but no website yet. So I am on Instagram at Siri. Um, and I have a YouTube channel that I don't post very much on. <laughs> but, um, Dr. Siri P. M. on YouTube. Um, and I just do beauty and medicine type of stuff. If you're interested in learning about hot topics in medicine and watching some of my makeup, yeah, <laughs> you can find me on YouTube. Yes, and I and I have to say, I was telling her this last time. Um, she, she didn't know this, I guess she she knows this now, but she didn't know. I I always follow her. Um, her stories on Instagram are always so interesting and very informative. Um, she has been giving us all kinds of updates on the vaccine and she clearly does her research. And, um, so I always, every time I see a story from you, I'm like, okay, let me see what she's saying about it. Um, Yes, yes. So if you want more information like that, trust me, she is your girl. Again, she is Instagram at Siri PMD. So check her out there. And on YouTube, yes, her she has these amazing her face is always just like flawless. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to hear about those kinds of topics and watch her put on makeup. Check her out, Dr. Siri P M D, um, and yeah, it's it's um, you'll you won't be you won't be disappointed. <laughs> All right, so we uh, we've come to the end of this interview, and it's been fantastic. Can you just close us out um, in prayer? Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to 
Lord, thank you so very much for this opportunity to converse. Thank you for this opportunity to share this information with other mothers who may be struggling and in need of a change. Lord, we thank you for all of the blessings you bestow on us and all the blessings to come, especially the blessing of motherhood. And again, we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you so, so much for all of your wisdom. It's been fantastic. Um, I, I hope that I, I haven't heard anything in the background. Is your daughter, is she like at school or at daycare or something? Cause it's, it's completely silent. <laughs> It's, it's okay. Nap time, so. yeah, it's okay. Oh, nap time. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So shout out, say hello to your husband and, and your daughter. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being here. We have to do this again. I have to bring you back again uh, to talk about more motherhood related topics. But yeah, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right, that was fantastic. I had such a wonderful time with my old school college friend. It's been amazing. I hope that you were blessed. I hope that you were encouraged. I hope that you learned something from this session. Um, if you did and you were encouraged, definitely subscribe to my channel. There will be lots more of uh, interviews and um, content like this that will bless you. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if there's anything that resonated with you. You have questions and all that. Leave a comment in the comment section. Share the video with friends. Until next time, guys. See ya.